Hello friends, now I will be talking to you about Alzheimer's disease. What is the disease? It is a chronic progressive disease. and there is slowly loss of memory, loss of memory. And this disease occurs exclusively in the older people above the age of 60 years. right. So, now what are the predisposing factor? In the predisposing factor, most important is the age. As I told you, it is a disease of the elderly person. Number two, it is more in females as compared to male. In some cases, family history may be positive. It is more common in low socio-economic low socioeconomic, low education, repeated head injury, head trauma, then certain genes which are responsible for this some of them are pre senilin g app genes amyloid precursor proteins is also common in down syndrome these are some of the predisposing conditions. Now, what is the pathology? Pathology is mainly is in the hippocampus. Hippocampus lies in the temporal lobe it is the place of memory. So, there is a pathology in the hippocampus and that is the reason why patient develop Alzheimer's disease. Now, what we get in the pathology? In the pathology, we get neuritic plaque, neurofibrillate tangle, and there may be beta amyloid deposition, amyloid deposition. Or there may be amyloid angiopathy. Amyloid angiopathy. Okay.
as far as investigation is concerned, there is no definite investigation which can prove that patient has Alzheimer disease or so called dementia. So, now let us see what all we have to rule out before we say remember Alzheimer disease is a diagnosis of exclusion. So, when we investigate the patient we do the following investigation CT scan to rule out especially subdural hematoma chronic subdural hematoma. We do thyroid function tests because hypothyroid can manifest with loss of memory so called dementia. Even vitamin B12 level should be done in all the patient of having dementia because B12 deficiency can also lead to dementia. Remember these are the reversible causes of dementia reversible in Alzheimer disease it is a irreversible. Then of course, we do VDRL test to rule out tertiary syphilis. Okay. So, remember it is a diagnosis of exclusion investigation. So, diagnosis is of exclusion you exclude other causes of dementia. Now, what are the clinical feature how patient come to us? First of all patient come with episodic loss of memory episodic loss of memory later on patient may have visual spatial in coordination that means, patient cannot uh, do the activity of daily life and he get lost in the familiar places. So, called visual spatial in coordination. Then some patient may become have developed cap grass syndrome. Cap grass syndrome as you know patient loses memory in Alzheimer disease. So, these patients have to be treated like small child, they have to be fed, they have to be uh, dressed up even for every small thing the patient need assistance and rather patient has apraxia also. Apraxia. Apraxia means patient forgets the learned motor activity. Whatever he has learned like he forget how to wear the cloth, how to eat all the learned motor activity he forgets apraxia. So, these patients are to be taken care like a care of a small child, but in around 10 percent of these cases patient think that caretaker is my enemy. The patient start beating the caretaker that is known as cap grass syndrome, but and one more thing patient may have language problem. But unconsciousness is not a feature. Unconsciousness 
is not a feature. Okay. So, as I told you patient come to us like this, we do all the investigation, thyroid hypothyroid has to rule out B12 deficiency, VDRL, syphilis are the important DD what we talk about. CT scan by and large is normal except what we get is in CT scan is diffuse cerebral atrophy with enlarged ventricle, diffuse cerebral atrophy with enlarged ventricles, but otherwise there is no other abnormality. So, if you talk about final diagnosis is only by biopsy. Well, now we have to treat this patient. How to treat these patients? So, before we start treatment, let us learn what is the basic biochemistry be in the disease of, of pathogenesis of dementia. The basic biochemical abnormality is reduce acetylcholine in the brain. So, obviously, we will be in the treatment, we will give any drug which causes increased acetylcholine level in the brain. So, in the treatment, Don Pazel is the drug of choice. It is a anticholinase stress drug, thereby it will it will increase the level of acetylcholine in the brain. Similarly, we have other anticholinesterase drug, rivastigmine. galantamine, they are all anticholinesterase drug. So, usually we start the treatment Don Pazil and that we give when the patient has initial mild to moderate disease. mild to moderate disease. But in the moderate to advanced stage of disease, we use memantine. It is a NMDA receptor antagonist. This we use in the moderate to severe diseases. Final course of the disease is usually patient has after the onset of disease, patient survive usually for 5 to 10 days, 5 to 10 years is the usual lifespan after the onset of the disease. This is all about Alzheimer's disease. Thank you very much.